to a roar. Alpine Stories. In the winter series of Alpine Stories, I visited one of the few remaining habitats of the endangered mountain pygmy possum with the saviour of the species, Dr Linda Broom from New South Wales National Parks and Wildlife. We didn't see any possums at that time as they were hibernating under the snow on Mount Blue Cow. But determined to meet and maybe even hold a possum, Linda invited me to return to the Alps around Kosciuszko for the annual summer trapping and surveying with her dedicated band of volunteers. We were also hoping to find another endangered species, the broad-toothed rat. We're at Charlotte Pass, um, in, right in front of the chalet actually, and this is, there's a boulder field behind us which is the habitat for the mountain pygmy possum. And in fact this is the largest boulder field and the best habitat for the pygmy possum in the whole of the park, in the whole of New South Wales. Who's the team we've got with us here? We've got my daughter Rose. Hi Rose, hey. how are you? Hi, good. Rose has been trapping possums since she was very small. And Gary Mayo, who's from the Australian National University, he's helping today. How are you going, Gary? Oh, I'm good, thank you. Have you done a bit of this before? Uh, I've been up helping Linda just once before. But, uh, yeah, it's a rewarding exercise. Get close to nature and uh, see a lot of lovely wildlife. Now, Rose, do you have um, do you have early memories of trapping? What yeah, can you tell me? Yeah, I do. Um, I have like memories of Mum carrying me around and sitting me on boulders and sending me down holes to get traps and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right, Mum? <laughs> well, she's small. She fits in the cracks better than I do. <laughs> but you obviously came out again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when so she was very small, when she was about two, she dropped her bottle down one of the cracks and we could see it, but we couldn't reach it. And there was a wail for a while. And then I had to reassure her that the possums would like the bottle, so that's calmed her down. And then every year after that for a while, we could look down the crack and see the bottle, <laughs> but we couldn't ever reach it. <laughs> All right, well, I guess we're going to go trapping. Yes, let's do it. So this is a mountain pygmy possum, so we need to um, look at that and see if it's got an ear tag. We have, at the moment, 100 traps set here, and we have teams, we've got four teams of two people and 25 traps on a row and, and we each go and check 25 traps and hope that there's pygmy possums in them and if there are we pull the pygmy possum out and, and check it for ear tags if it hasn't been tagged we put a new tag on take all its vital statistics whether it's breeding whether it's healthy whether it's got parasites um, weigh it and let it go We had nine here yesterday, so hopefully we'll get a few more today. It's the third morning of trapping, and we usually get a few more each day as they get to know that the walnuts are around, and the word gets out that there's free bed and breakfast for them. <laughs> She's pregnant, is she? She has, yes. This time of year is when they breed. As soon as the snow melts, they come into breeding condition. And because it melted early this year, the babies are quite large. Mm -hmm. you, can see, you can see a little, turn it round a bit. See how the babies are in the pouch? Oh, you yeah. can see a little foot and a tail. And these ones are about a centimetre and a half, which is quite large for this time of year. They grow to about two and a half centimetres and get a light covering of fur before the female leaves the babies in a nest. They stay in the pouch for about a month and then she leaves them in a nest for a month and comes back and feeds them. And then after that they're independent. They seem quite han handleable. Yes, they are. They're, they're, um, well, sometimes one of the females will, will get a bit feisty if they, and start biting your fingers. They have drawn blood on me from time to time. <laughs> this one's not too bad. We use the follicles of the head. They carry the DNA um, that we analyse. Oh, so that, that's the main markers. purpose of, of the hair? The taking the hair is, is to, get, um, to do genetic analysis. Ouch. <laughs> it's not too bad. It's, as Rose said, it's like having your eyebrows plucked. <laughs> <laughs>
And then finally it was my turn to hold a possum. Bit of a neck to it, isn't it? Cute creature. Until... Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she bit me. Oh, dear. She bit me. That wasn't very nice. The little teeth, they? they're really... Uh, they're sharp yeah, they little really teeth. Hurt. As we continued inspecting the traps, Linda made an interesting discovery at the entrance to a small cave. We've got a pile of rosella feathers um, and leading into a burrow. And uh, an animal's obviously denning in there, but because it doesn't have a strong smell, it's not a fox, because foxes have a very distinctive smell. What it's a very, I... well, like diluted skunk, really. It's, <laughs> it's quite strong. It's the thing it reminds me of most, because uh, when I was in the States, you'd often run over dead skunks in the middle of the road. Mm. How the old song goes. And the, and the um, smell would stay on the tyres of the vehicle for weeks afterwards. It was just rank. But fox sort of smells a very diluted version of that, <laughs> I always think. So, I mean, do you see this is a threat to the possums? Yes, indeed, if it's, a, if it's a feral cat. And that's one of the biggest problems we've got around the resorts is that cat numbers are building up. And we have trapped several cats here at Charlotte Pass. We've caught a lot at Blue Cow. And the population, the mountain pygmy possum population at Blue Cow, went from about 30 females down to two, two years ago. And um, I attribute that, that mainly to feral cats. Just when I thought my work was done, Linda woke me up at 6 o'clock the next morning and reminded me that we hadn't yet seen a broad-toothed rat. Final morning, Linda. Yes, it's, um, it's before 7 o'clock. We're out here to see if we can find the elusive broad-toothed rat. So it's our last chance to go and get this creature. This is the last trap that we're checking. Richard has to leave this morning and we finally found him a Mastocomys. It's a native rat, it's a broad tooth rat is its common name. Um, and it's another species that's a specialist alpine species. So they're, they're herbivores. Here it lives under the snow. In the winter it runs along, makes little runways and it's active during the winter. It doesn't hibernate like the pygmy possum. Okay, just um, ra wrapping up what we did with the trapping, um, our numbers are actually down a little bit from last year. Last year we had 23 on the third day, this year we've had 16 on Charlotte Pass. So we are down a bit. Summit Road it's down a lot. We got 10 yesterday and last year we got 16, so we're down maybe about a third on Summit Road. I, I kind of expected that because it's been such a low snow cover year. We can't manage climate change, but we can manage predators, for example. Or, and, and rabbits, there are a lot of rabbits around here which attract the predators. So we'll have to increase our management efforts to try and compensate a little bit for the other threats like the global warming which is a long-term um, threat that everyone has to, has to do something about. We can't do it here in the, isolated in the mountains, it's a worldwide effort.